Human beings love to make things. Whether we're making stories or music or objects with clay or fabric or wood. Craft is so integral to our being that we don't notice it almost. Yeah, I think craft, it speaks a language. Any sort of art speaks a different language, you know, and I think it's a universal language, to, to be honest. We're here for the opening of the inaugural Indian Ocean Craft Triennial. This triennial came about because we wanted to look at and talk to and learn from the artists in our region. All around the Indian Ocean, there are people who make their livelihoods out of making objects with their hands. And there are skills that have been passed down generation to generation for thousands of years. And we don't always appreciate what goes into making of some of the objects we take for granted. I do a lot of carving of pearl shell and wood as well. I use ebony wood. We got, it's all local material from around our country there. My tribe is called the Bard tribe which is, we live on the coast. It's about 200 kilometers north of Broome on the Dampier Peninsula. I spent about a month and a half cutting on the shell and carving into the shell and getting it all together. My people have been using the materials I use these days. They've been using it for thousands of years. I've always wanted to do like something to do with the Milky Way because in my culture, it's like the realm of the dead. There's a lot of cultural stories from my tribe in the Milky Way. The theme of this year's exhibition is curiosity and rituals of the everyday. And rituals of the everyday are all of those things we take for granted. It's the cup that you hold in your hand, the meal that you share with somebody, it's the objects that hold those foods. And of course there's the objects of adornment that human beings have enjoyed for millennia. This project came together so that we could showcase our women's bags. Our old fellas moved following the seasons, so we had a bag. Women have bags. And so in our bags, we would have carried things that were precious, got them through trade or it was passed down. And importantly, we needed the grinding stone to make the flour, to make the medicines. With each bag, it was personalised to each woman as well, just like us in the modern times. We like our certain style and we sort of put our own little touch on it. There was 11 of us involved, making our bags together around the campfire. Collectively, we shared stories, and I think for me, that's my takeaway, is learning from the other women as well. But most of all, honouring my women. It's amazing to just learn from the older generations and to really get in touch with your heritage, and it means a lot. The Indian Ocean Rim touches 22 countries. We've only been able to include eight countries, South Africa, Kenya, India, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and of course, Australia. What's been fascinating have been the number of artists whose ancestors have come from Malaysia and moved to South Africa or come from Sri Lanka and moved to Thailand. And of course, all of those people who have come to Western Australia as well. So there's a huge movement swirling around of people through this ocean. Uh, my name's Susie Vickery and you're about to enter my Indian Ocean. <laughs> the exhibition's called The Curious Five Go Surfing, so it's about five women who transformed themselves by crossing the ocean. The first character is the first woman to circumnavigate the world. She had to bind her breasts and she dressed up as a boy so you can turn it round with the knobs and she becomes a different person. James Barry disguised herself as a man so that she could study medicine. Effie Fellows, she was born in Perth in 1893 and she then travelled the world as a vaudeville performer, as a male impersonator. I wanted my work to be about the ocean and how the ocean can affect you. But it was also about how we are transforming the ocean, filling it with rubbish and lots of the fish are on the endangered conservation list. The artists are discussing issues of gender, diaspora, colonisation, environment. All of those issues that are with us every day right now are the issues that are concerning the artists who've been invited to show here. 
This piece is inspired by what is happening to our beautiful forests um, in the southwest. When the bauxite mining happens, they clear massive areas of the forest. They might leave one tree behind in the middle of what looks like Mars, basically. And to see the cockatoos flying over that tree that's been part of their habitat for generations, it's just really heartbreaking. The pyre is made from reclaimed Jarrah sleepers. They're reclaimed from the Hotham Valley Railway. And building the pyre from those pieces that were once in the forest that took the trains and took the people out there to actually log it, I thought that was a fitting way to use them. Craft can definitely be a political tool. I hope my work shows the message that I'm trying to say behind the unsustainability of bauxite mining and what we need to preserve for the future. All of these artists are using traditional skills and materials to talk about the world in a contemporary way. If we understand how we make things, we've got a better understanding of the world in which we live.